Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? Uh, glad you could make it one second to this channel, to this video. Uh, thank you very much. Hope all are doing great. Uh, so today we're going to have a very quick discussion on cloud analysts. It's a tool. Uh, if you have not watched one of this previous video on this series, where I was talking about uh, high performance computing and then how do you uh, measure the performances? How do you do a prediction on the performances? So this tool actually gonna help us in predicting the performance where we can find out like how much costing gonna happen, uh, basically how much uh, power can be reduced, can be consumed altogether, and then how the workload can be balanced. And then we can also see like uh, out of the box how many things cloud analyst gonna allow. Right, so the link for those two things are gonna be there in the description of this video. Number one, how do you download Cloud Analyst? And number two, it's gonna be uh, the link to the previous video where you have to understand the fundamental of prediction. Right, so let's get quickly uh, move to the uh, situation where we're gonna uh, discuss how do you do that? <clears throat> how do you run Cloud Analyst and all? So as you can see, it's a jar file. So it does not require any installations or anything. So what I have to do, just double click on that and get it started. Right, so this is the first initial interface. How uh, you're gonna look into this. So as you can see, it's a world map. And in this map, I can actually figure out where gonna be my data center, where all my user base is gonna be there. By default, we can see like there is one data center, which is called DC1, and then one is uh, UB1, which is my user base. That means all my connections gonna come from this region and this all connection gonna get connected to the data center here. Right, so let, now let's get it started. How do you do that? What are the options and how do you gonna define that? The first option here on the very left hand side of ours is called configure simulation. So there we're gonna uh, define uh, what all possibilities are there. How do you want to run this simulation? What are the loads and all? So let's get started. So let's click on configure simulation and let's see how it goes. Now, as I can see here, I have one user base already added, but before that, uh, the simulation duration is for 60 seconds, which will turn into 60 minutes rather. And I can go forward and change it to hours or days or something. So let me have it for 60 minutes. That means for one hour, you're gonna run the simulation. But however, here it's gonna run very quickly, very fast. Uh, it will not take one hour to get actually to the results. Right, so here in the user base, what I have, I have a name for the user base. I can define the region. So based on this region, it will go to a different continent. Uh, how many requests are gonna take per hour? Uh, what is the size of each request? Uh, what is the time when the peak hour starts and when it ends? Average peak hour load, number of users in a peak hour, and off peak hour, how many load gonna be there? So as you can see, it's very, very detailed here. Uh, there is no uh, parameter left out, which you don't want it to consider here. <clears throat> right, so let me click on add new and let's see what, how do I add a new user base here? So I have got another user base, which is my user base too. Uh, let me go forward and put it in a different region. I don't know which region it's gonna go because these are all notations. Of course, once I uh, complete this configuration, we can go back to the map and see where it's happening. And uh, I'm not going to change request per hour. I gonna change the size. So let me have instead of 100 bytes, let me have a thousand bytes. Uh, what time the peak hour starts? Let's say it's gonna start at five, <clears throat> GMT five. Uh, when it's gonna end, it's gonna end at uh, say 10 hours. Uh, at peak hours, I'm gonna have 4,000 users here and uh, average, uh, let it continue on that, right? So as I click on any of these options here, I gonna come out of this editing option. I can keep on adding different, different components for that, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, now let me go forward and go ahead and define the data center. So. What is the data center configuration? What is the basic tendency of the connection to be forwarded? Either it can go to the closest data center, uh, it can reduce the response time based on that, it can find out dynamically what is the data center. Are uh, you gonna have a, a complete different video made to differentiate and talk about the service broker policy? I'm not going to discuss much on that here. 
let me add one more new data center here and define how that's going to happen. So the moment I click on add new data center, it says that whatever infrastructure I have, I have already been using that. Now, if I have to add a new data center, I'm going to uh, define the new data center. That means I'm going to add new infrastructure. So how do I add new infrastructure? I'm going to go to the second tab on the top, which is data center configuration. And here I can see like uh, I have a data center, which is at some X region zero. What is the architecture? What is the operating system? What is the VMM we are running? Hope you remember what is a VMM and what are the initial costing for that? I gotta define all these are editable. I can go ahead and add multiple of that and I can define which location I wanted to get it going. So I gonna add it at three, say third region. And what I gonna do is I gonna configure this one uh, uh, for little more costlier say this data center is a little costlier data center for me so i'm gonna add and customize little more configurations here so i made it uh, for every virtual machine i have to pay ten dollars for an hour i can add a new physical uh, infrastructure for that so if i select the first data center which was existing you can see some physical hardware has been assigned to that uh, if i select the second data center i see already some by default components are been added here let me uh, have it as it is there. And then the final tab on the top, what I have, I'm calling it uh, advanced. In advanced, what I'm gonna define, I'm gonna define uh, the number of user bases, how many grouping factors I'm gonna have. These grouping factors are related to network components where I can uh, define multiple network groupings of them. Uh, I'm gonna also have uh, load balancing policies. So out of the box, they provide three load balancing policies, round robin, uh, equal split current execution time load and the throttled one uh, the round robin was just popular and by default however if i use if i want i can write the java code for that and i can get it added so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna uh, save this configuration for a later use as well if i need it for a purpose and uh, let me get it added to my specific folder i'm gonna call it temp configuration by default, it's gonna add uh, with a .sim file extension. No problem, that's all right. I'm gonna click on save, <clears throat> and I'm gonna click on the button done. So the moment I said done, what happens is uh, the complete data center configuration has been defined. As you can see, I do have uh, uh, two user bases already been configured. One data center is visible here, another data center is in some of this region, wherever. And I'm gonna also define the internet characteristics if I have to define the internet characteristics, I can see what all internet configurations are being done here. I can have a delay metric and I can have a bandwidth metric. Uh, refer to your computer network sports for under, having a detailed understanding about these two things. Uh, here, we are not going to talk about that much. I'm gonna click on done. Uh, for some reason, it's not uh, saving it out, but that's all right. And then finally, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on run simulation. Once I run, start the simulation, I'm gonna see, uh, you see it's finished in a couple of seconds, that's it. And then here I'm gonna also go ahead and figure it out. What was the response time for, for each region? Uh, what was my data center's performance? What was the maximum, minimum? How the data center uh, loading was going on during the peak hours and during the off peak hours? What was the costing? What was the grand total? And for virtual machine, how much we are paying for data transfer, how much we are paying, and total how much gonna be the costing for it. So this actually simulates, if at all I have to run one proper application on a cloud data center, how much costing I gonna do. So for a bigger organization, it can help me to actually figure, figure out uh, how much costing it gonna take it for. Right, so I can also export this result and save it in a PDF file for a later use for my business presentation or business meeting. Uh, I can close it for a time being. So that's it guys, uh, this is basically how it goes on. There are two more options, whatever I have available here. One was the boundary region. If I click on that, so it will tell me like which all regions are connected uh, as I was figuring it out uh, on the previous screen where we were defining the configuration. So these are the region. If I wanted to see the region mappings, I can as well do that. Uh, so that's what it is pretty much very, very standard. All right, so that was uh, very sharp and stiff, I believe. Uh, so hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to go back and check the previous video 
link in the description if you are to try it out i'm gonna give the download link for cloud analyst in the description as well and that's pretty much it friends thank you for once again joining in uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you